Have you ever wondered why the calls to the external APIs or to the database from your application are very slow? If yes, then um, in today's video, I would like to show you how to cache the specific resources in your memory to improve the performance of your API. It will be the simplest uh, approach by using the iMemory cache from the Microsoft. I would like to show you now how the caching mechanism works. So in this scenario, we have the client. This client uh, would like to get some uh, resource from our API. Mm, so he calls our API. It could be actually the number of the people that live in a specific city. Uh, and this data will be returned from the database. We have the resource and this resource is returned back to our client. Of course, it takes a lot of time because we had to call the database. And if it happens all the time, then it's the bottleneck of our service. So we can mm, increase the performance by using the caching mechanism. The caching mechanism works uh, in the manner that mm, based on the specific cache key, it could be whatever, but in that case, it will be the city name. Uh, then we can return this data, not from the database, but from our RAM memory. Then we are omitting the one call that is uh, the call to the database to get this data. And we are increasing mm, the very much the performance of uh, our application. We have two types of the expiration times. The first one is called absolute. Absolute means that even though you requested for the specific resource before reaching uh, this absolute an expiration time, it will be removed from your cache memory. So it will not be extended at all. The second one is called sliding expiration time. Sliding uh, in this uh, scenario means that if you reach this time, but before you request for this uh, cache resource, then it will be extended for this specific amount of time. All right, and in this section, I would like to show you how to implement the caching mechanism in your application. For that purpose, I've created one uh, simple application that fetches the current stock price of the specific resource given the parameters, and then uh, displays uh, in the specific structure. Uh, I'm using the Commodities API. Uh, the link will be down below in the description um, that you can order your free API key. Okay, so just for the start, um, I can show you how it works. So we have the controller, we have the service and service calls, uh, the commodities API, and then uh, deserializing the response and, um, and constructing the structure for the user just to return the DTO to the user. Uh, okay, so we have the controller, we have the service, as I have said, we have the one method to get stock price async, and in the implementation here, I can show you that it creates the client. Uh, it mm, changes the resource names to the uppercase because it, this is the requirement. Uh, then uh, we are creating the query parameters uh, based on the API key and the symbols given. Uh, I can maybe show you mm, how I'm injecting the API key. I'm using the options pattern. So mm, in the program CS, I've specified the stock price API options, and then based uh, on uh, the specific const string, I am um, I'm getting this specific configuration from the settings JSON. So here we have the stock price API section in the JSON file, and we have the URL and the API key. Uh, so now going back to the service, we have this get stock price async. And then mm, mm, when we get the specific resource from the service, uh, I'm creating the resource DTO object, I'm getting the name amount you need and the currency, and then I am returning this to the user. Mm, so now the problem is that it's very slow because it's not caching the response. The stock price of the, for instance, corn will not change every second, so we can cache it. So I can show you in the Swagger how it looks right now. 
I'm giving the wheat and the corn, and okay, we have the response, but it was very slow. So we can start implementing the caching mechanism. So I will switch it off. And the first and the most crucial part is just to add the memory cache in the program CS. So it will be add memory cache. And then we are actually ready to go. So then in the service, we can inject to the constructor the I'm memory cache. And of course, import it. And then inject to the constructor. Through the dependency injection, make this accessible in our service. And then um, the first thing is just to create the method. Uh, that will generate for us the cache key because based on this cache key will uh, return the object from the memory uh, without calling the external API. So it will be maybe we can just create the one private method. cache key will give the list of the resources over there and then we'll return ring dot join we will have the separator as this and also we'll give, give the list of those resources so it will be the one specific cache key for us For the pair of the resources. Okay, and now we can start to implement the caching mechanism. So it will be resources DTO, resource DTOs, and then we'll start. It will be cache. We have to await this because it will be asynchronous method. Get, or, get or create async. So as the first parameter, we need to specify the cache key. So our previously created method will be perfect for this. The resources as the parameter, and then will be entry. Okay, at first we need to specify the uh, expiration time. I will just use the sliding expiration time because it will not change over time. And we can specify it will be time span from, from minutes, for instance, two. All right, and now I would like to just copy all of this over there. Then I remove all of those. And now we are actually ready to go. We have the resource details and it will be returned from our cache if it's of course available. So maybe we can now check if it worked. So I will run this application. Okay, I've made one mistake. It has to be above the builder of the app. So, once again, and now it's up and running. So, we'll make one call to this API once again. Okay, it was long as before, and now. Then, as you see, it increased very much. We have the 8 milliseconds. So the 8 milliseconds 
and then every time we'll request the same resource, it will be returned from the cache and will be extended because we use the, the sliding expiration time instead of the absolute. It will be all. All right, so it will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I would like to invite you for the next ones and also to hit the subscribe button and the like button down below.